the best time of the entire webinar in my mind is q a and a lot have come through and please if you have more questions throw them into the question and answer box uh, so we can answer those but kyle i'm just going to go through these pick out the ones that uh we can answer in in eight minutes and we'll see if we could go longer uh okay does dji terra allow for exportable reports to clients that is a good question it kind of depends on what you would define as a report what do you want out of a report um the honestly dji terra i would see it more as a open-ended processing engine so you're going to be able to get really good 2D and 3D outputs. We do have a quality and processing report so that you can understand how accurate your data and how the data processed. But if you are looking for specific types of reports, it does seem like what we, we don't want to get way too specific and spread our eggs way too thin. So we're allowing, and we have this ecosystem of straight up whole companies and hundreds of people that are getting employed just because they need to utilize our hardware to do a specific report. You look at drone deploy, you look at Raptor maps, you look at PIX4D, especially PIX4D fields. You know, a lot of those tools, if you're looking for a specific type of output, I will say there's a, probably a bit more with those third parties, but what can, Terra can do is very easily, very in, make a better mesh in my opinion than pretty much anyone else at a great price point so that once you get the output you can run it through whatever analysis further you'd like to do perfect um so something we did cover but uh maybe needs to be stated in a different way is someone asked are all the payloads basically swappable and i mean i can answer the question it's a very quick one no if you buy a Mavic 3 Enterprise, you're having that fixed dual RGB sensor, the 48 megapixel and the, the 20 megapixel. If you are uh, if you are buying them thermal, it is a fixed thermal sensor. If you're buying the multispectral, it's the fixed uh, four band multispectral with RGB camera. So they are not swappable. You are buying the addition that has the payload that you are looking for. Anything else you want to add to that, Kyle? Yeah, all of the sensors on all every three drone, they have more individual sensors on them or larger sensors covering more use cases than the previous generation did. So the M3E can also do inspection with that telezoom rather than the P4P or the Mavic 2 Pro, just because it had one static sensor. Right. Um, I'm just gonna keep cranking through these. I hope you don't mind. Um, somebody asked the bands on the multispectral. I think it was red, green, near infrared and red edge, right? Yep, and feel free to reach out to me, Kyle.Miller at DJI. You can see there if you need the specific wavelength and what our accuracy is capturing bands of light. Perfect. Um, someone asked about the aftermarket floodlight accessory. So I know Fo Fox Fury makes stuff, uh, Loom Cube makes stuff. It, has anyone done any accessorizing to the Mavic 3 Enterprise uh, for floodlights? Another good question. Um, I the only one that i know of and there may be more out there so i don't want to i apologize if i step on some uh, toes i believe czi does have their spotlight out they are actively working on different payloads for the mavic 3 enterprise we we just came out with a speaker but i believe you can start purchasing from czi spotlight options that's right czi as well my bad for leaving that one out um no worries okay. I'm jumping kind of later to the presentation and we'll work back up just because we were talking about different things later on. Um, someone asked, what is the best for ag crop survey? Mavic 3 multispectral or Matrice 30, uh, sorry, Matrice with the M30T? Which I Ooh, think they're so, completely different things, but that was the question. Yeah, I mean, we do have some in the ag space that are, no, we're coming up on time, that are using the ops, the optical zoom sensors on the M30 and the Matrice 300 and the H20T. If you need to be able to do individual plant analysis from 200, 100 feet up, they there are tools. I think Tyrannus is uh, potentially utilizing machine learning and AI and taking really high quality imagery. But if you're looking for plant health, if you're looking for mapping and modeling, it's really going to be that Mavic 3 multispectral. Um, and I, a, a shout out here, if you are looking to train machine learning to be able to find weeds, pests, disease, something the ag industry is looking for, for ever since I've gotten into it in 2013 and 14, 
uh, the Pixworthy Smart tool by being able to train your model on what it finds with all the different vegetation analysis and the bands that it's using. Check out the Pixworthy Fields Smart tool. Just a quick plug for my bud, Nathan Stein. Perfect. Um, so here's a few questions about batteries. So someone asked, are the batteries hot swappable and are they self-heating? So two different questions, but uh, about the batteries that I actually do not know the answers to. Kyle? Oh no. Did Am I, I hear you? still? I can hear you. I think, uh, I think I'm good. You still see me? I can see you and hear you. Okay, perfect. I was pretty sure that I caught the majority of that question. Can you repeat it one more time? Yeah. So two different questions on batteries. One, are they hot swappable? And the other, are they self-heating? No and no. Um, if you are looking for heating batteries and hot swappable, that's more of that Matrice 30, M300. Um, with the price point, no. I will say if you have Mavic 3 batteries, you're going to be able to use that in the Mavic 3 Enterprise because it's basically the same form factor of drone. But it has one battery, so you, unless you're really fast, you're not going to be able to hot swap it. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, it's not heated, but with proper battery maintenance, we have been able to fly below freezing. Perfect. Um, someone asked, can you load DJI Fly on the controller? And I'm guessing so that you could operate other editions of airframes. That's a no, correct? And that's correct. So that smart controller is really meant to fly with Pilot 2, and it's really meant to fly with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. And no, unfortunately, the Pro Plus controller isn't coming to the Mavic 3 Enterprise, at least at this point, maybe sometime long term in the future. But we are focusing on the RC Pro Enterprise for this drone, flying with Pilot 2 or SDK with Drone Deploy or something like that. Okay, so uh, before we get into the last question, because we are up at time and I could do this all day, but what I'm going to promise to everyone here is that I will take every question, I will painstakingly type out the answer for everything that I do know, I'll ask Kyle for a color on the things I don't know, and I'll send those out to everybody that's on here. We'll also send out the recording from this webinar, a link to it, uh, we'll host it on YouTube somewhere, and so that you can watch this again and get all this information later. So know that I'll send that out, give me 24 hours or so to get that uploaded and, and taken care of. So before the last question, I wanna say thanks, Kyle. Uh, you're the man, I appreciate you. We're long time pals and I hope that goes on and on and on and we're doing more of these webinars. Right. In the future. Thanks to everyone for being here. You have no idea that when we say, hey, do you wanna do a webinar? That's the beginning of like the process, but there's a lot of work and coordination and stuff that goes into creating these. And it is all hoping that people show up and learn something. So whether it was waiting for the last 15 minutes, ask your question, and hopefully we get to all of those, or we were able to say something that either inspired you or answered that thing that's been itching at you or helped you make a better decision on your drone purchases, like that's our objective. And so you being here, us being able to see a number of people sitting in here listening makes it so that it's like, okay, we did a good thing. Uh, so thank you for being here live and, and asking so many thoughtful questions. That was a long like uh, wrap up, but it's just the endless appreciation from our end to you just for you being here and, and moving this industry forward. To the last question, and it's not for any sure. particular reason it's the last question, but it maybe allows you to uh, flex some or add some additional knowledge to people. Someone's asking their recommended overlap for creating 3D models. And I'm guessing that these are just RGB 3D models, not anything too tricky, nothing thermal or whatever. Do you have best practices for doing modeling in general you wanna share so that somebody could go out for their first time maybe using Terra and, and get something that they could be proud of on the 3D model side? Sure, we can do you one better. I'll share a couple links that we can send on the follow-up. That'd be some great articles to read. Um, you know, if you are trying to make really good 3D reconstructions, I would say at minimum a 70% side lap. And with how fast the imagery captures with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, you can do 80% side lap. One other feature that we just released with the Mavic 3 Enterprise series of drones, so this covers all of them, is the option for Smart Oblique, which is actually um, controlling the camera's gimbal while it's flying. So rather than having to fly a bunch of different missions or only getting nadir imagery, it's going to fly it one way, capturing nadir, forwards, 
and actually somewhat backwards, and then it'll turn and do basically a crosshatch where it's doing 90 degrees opposite and capturing out those three aspects as well. And so with that, you should be able to generate a really good 3D model, but I will say, if you wanna make the best one, honestly, a lot of what I'll do is I'll add an extra orbit or two when the mission is done, just capturing manually. You can also just set it to time-lapse mode and capture every 0.7 seconds or one second or two seconds, and then all you have to worry about is flying. We get the obstacle avoidance sensors that are utilized there so that you don't hit anything and you're not running into anything while you're flying around the sun. Um, but I will add, if you wanna make a really good model, sometimes it does take a little bit of manual flight capturing um, a couple orbits. And honestly, it's, it's a lot faster doing it that way, just going bang, plan a mission real quick, capture some obliques during that mission and then do a couple orbits around them. There are some other tools such as drone deploy, such as UCGS that do have other facade type captures that you'll be able to do. Perfect. Well, Kyle, again, I appreciate you. If anyone has questions for Kyle, kyle.miller at dji.com. Also follow him on LinkedIn. I think that you mentioned a bunch of things you're posting there. And if you're not active in the LinkedIn community, I've I was resistant for a long time, but I really find it's where you get the best drone news out there. Uh, and then if you have any questions for me, Randall at DSLRpros.com. I am very respondent to my emails. So if you have stuff you need, hit me up. Uh, but thanks again for being here, Kyle. Thanks again for your time. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Thank you, Randall. And thank you, guys. Perfect. Take care, guys.